Worm your way where the fern fronds tall fashion a lacework over your head, hemming you in with a high green wall. Then, when the thrush calls once, stop dead. Ask the old grey wallaby there, him prick-eared by a woolly butt tree, how to encounter a glug. Australia's own C.J. Dennis may well have offered similar advice to those taking part in the current Queanbeyan quest for a yowie. Few people are fortunate to be able to claim an encounter with Australia's answer to a yeti or a Bigfoot. Well, I'm afraid uh, it's rather unlikely. It's unlikely on uh, geological grounds. Um, for example, there's been uh, a very large major sea gap between Australia and Southeast Asia, which is the nearest part of the rest of the world, which appears to have been there, well, we don't know for how long, but uh, of recent animals, it appears that only uh, Homo sapiens has got across, bringing with him the uh, things like the dingo, his presumably semi-domesticated dog at that time. Dr. Colin Groves is lecturer in prehistory and anthropology at the Australian National University. Yowie hit the headlines again last month when the Queen Bean Age published the claims of a Blue Mountains naturalist, Rex Gilroy, supported by photographs and illustrations said to prove its existence. It was too good an opportunity for the Queen Bean Festival Committee, headed by public servant Jim Belshaw, to pass up. $100,000 is a lot of money. How safe do you think it is? I think it's very safe. Uh, that can mean safe in two ways. First, there is some chance we'll have to pay the reward but I think that we'll have no problems in recouping any reward that we pay. A Yowie would be an international story of the first order. Today around Canberra, radio talkback programs were inundated with alleged sightings. John Shand, an unemployed playwright, claims he's actually caught one. Well, my friend Jack and I were going for our normal early Sunday morning walk beside Lake George. And um, we were walking along the edge of the lake on the far side, away from where the road is. And... Uh, Suddenly we noticed some ripples in the water and slowly a head emerged. And at first we thought it was some sort of ape that had been taking a swim, but as more and more of it appeared, it um, showed that it wasn't neither an ape nor a man of any sort. It was sort of a, um, a cross between the two. Um, it had the marks of intelligence that a man bears, but the fur, long shaggy fur, more like an ape. But it stood at least 14 foot tall by the time it emerged from the water. 14 feet? Yes. Um, How did you actually go about capturing it then? Well, um, when it caught sight of us, it reacted rather strongly and cried, Yahoo! And um, charged towards us. And as it got nearer and was about to make the kill, it started crying, Yowie! 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 In a voice similar to that, though not quite the same. Um, whereupon my friend, who was the more adventurous of the two, tried to make communication with it. Um, it appeared not to respond. In fact, it just responded by grabbing him and between what was just his thumb and his forefinger, um, holding him high in the air and then bringing it to his mouth and biting off his arm. It ripped his arm off? Right off, yes. Well, now, this was doing? quite a shock to my friend, of course, but it appeared that it was more of a shock to the, the um, Yawi, who fainted when it saw the blood, I think. And, uh, my friend now was becoming more much more excited about this fainted Yowie than about his missing arm. Um, and he suggested we should try and bind it up. Now, luckily, we had some rope and we did this. Um, bound well, how, how, did you, how did you fit a 14-foot Yowie in a cage this size? Well, that was a problem, yes. Um, what we had to do is we, um, one of us had a saw by sheer luck, and we cut it off above the waist and just brought the top half back and put it in there. We noticed that immediately we uh, cut off the top half, the, um, the wound healed of its own accord. Mm -hmm. And by the time we got it back here, new legs were already forming. How should they approach a yaoi? Well, with any new creature, I approach it with, with some caution. Uh, though I personally haven't heard of any stories of people being hurt uh, by yaois. Uh, or at least none that I can verify. I would say to uh, anybody thinking of going out to look for the Yowie that uh, there might be dangers involved. Uh, I would quote um, <coughs> a story of uh, the Bigfoot in North America uh, of a girl who uh, stated that she was kidnapped by a Bigfoot and held captive for uh, some two to three weeks and uh, the animal made repeated attempts to ravish her and finally she got away under very stirring circumstances. 
and uh, therefore I would say um, uh, think twice um, if before you go out, uh, not only girls, but there's also the possibility we know that homosexuality exists in the animal kingdom, and um, there's also the possibility perhaps of a gay yaoi. So um, watch it when you go and have a look. The specimen shelves at the ANU, right at the scene of the action, tell a sorry tale. Although they're an impressive array of hominids' heads from Pekin Man to Heidelberg and Chukutian, not to mention Wajak and East Rudolph, there's still an empty space awaiting Australia's own link with the apes. Colin Grove says he'd be thrilled if that shelf could be filled. Well, I suppose uh, you can't exclude its existence. Uh, as a scientist, uh, I must not do this. As Charles Kingsley said, in order to prove that no water babies exist, you must see no water babies existing. But up until now, I must admit that the uh, nearest thing to a yaoi I've seen is my friend Chaucer. Who's Chaucer? I'll show you. Chaucer! Chaucer! Come on! <laughs> hey. That's Chaucer. <laughs> <laughs>